Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice-monthly talk shows, virtual stitch-ins, celebrity interviews, and podcasts. Learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by QT Fabrics, and we have In Deep Ship. <laughs> <laughs> ship. <laughs> um, <laughs> fabrics, and I love them. They're super cute. They're ships in a bottle and little... Little funny boat names on all of the... And the life preservers. Life preservers. And they've even got some old pirate reference. Little thing. Just saying. And, and exciting news. As part of this episode, we are having a fabric giveaway. Not for this. This is mine. <laughs> uh, actually, it's going to I do a quilt I thought you got sample. accused of I getting know. a fabric last time. But, um, so we'll have a picture of the bundle on our website, which again, you can see by clicking the I in that corner or clicking the link down there to the blog post on our website for this right. episode. So we'll have a picture of the bundle there and the, oh, the good old giveaway. So yes, be sure to enter for that. And thank you, QT Fabrics, for Absolutely. They're so fun. sending us fabrics. I, I know. Them. So today we're going to be talking about neutral colors and custom quilting. And we are joined by Pam's quilt, Great Grunge. So what you been doing? I, you know... Not a lot. Well, I've I've started teaching class again at a local quilt store, so getting that rev back up after, you know, the holidays. Speed <sighs> is upon us. Speed. Well, you know, like holidays, everything just speeds up like at oh. the holidays. And now that that's over with, I feel like kind of get back into the groove of I thought you meant normal... the Keanu Reeves movie. <laughs> no. No. Like, is that a new tradition? That's January? Mm -hmm. We all watch Speed and not no. go more than 35 miles an you hour? You know what? For me, January <laughs> is, well, one, my birthday's in January, so, like, it's birthday month, but, and I think you should celebrate the whole month. Like, just every day, you should celebrate. Okay. When it's your birthday. Just saying. I don't want to limit it to a day. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, I... I always feel like at the beginning of the year I'm cleaning up or getting stuff cleaned out or whatever. So I decided to have a party this year. And so I cleaned out a, our a formal living room in our house. You know that extra room in these houses that you're like, I don't know what to do with this. Extra formal living Am I, you're looking at me like you've never heard of this Like, before. I don't know what room you're talking about in your house. That's well, it's, like... a li it's what we call the library because oh, we put oh, all the books in gotcha. there. Gotcha, okay. But technically, yes. it's a formal living room, but it's the library. It's not that formal. Anyway, we cleaned it out, <laughs> and it looks really good, and now people are going to come over. And so I told my husband, I said, you know, we should have a party every year because I get stuff cleaned up, and I... Hang up pictures I've been meaning, meaning to hang up for a year and whatever. And he said, yeah, next year we'll do the, we'll have a party at the garage. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's what I've been doing. So what have you been doing? Stuff. Stuff. Things. Hanging out, trying to recover from the holidays and also get You're up. working on a, a challenge quilt right now, aren't uh, you? Yeah. And it's due, <laughs> so it will be done by the time this episode drops. Heaven help us. If it's not, well, there's no point to the challenge, and I just made a weird quilt for no reason. <laughs> it's a beautiful quilt. Don't let her burn. <sighs> it looks good. It's but, gorgeous. yeah, it's it's custom quilting, a different design, and every stinking clamshell, and so it's taking a little while, which is not my usual speed. No, it's not your usual speed, which I think is great. I like but, it. But, you know, it's liberating to be like, I'm going to try this quilt design that's maybe super crazy, but I only have to fit it in, like, a six-inch clamshell. Yeah. So, and then I'm done. I never have to do it again. <laughs> It looks good. Yeah. What I've seen so far of the pictures looks good. So, so did you hear the news? What news? That no. the Quilt Museum ranked fourth in top destinations in Kentucky in a recent USA Today poll. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it beat was... out Churchill Downs. Really? Yeah. It was. Yeah. So quilts are more important than horses? That's big. In Kentucky, yeah. It was kind of crazy. That is big. I think the Bourbon Museum came in the top three. <laughs> Yes, but we all understand why the Bourbon Museum came in the top three. Because you need that to go to some of these other places. Kentucky. <laughs> there was a, I was born in Kentucky, so that's like home. I have a lot of love for Kentucky. 
But there was a time where um, 80% of the counties in Kentucky were dry, and yet they sold 80% of the bourbon worldwide. And I think that may still be true. I know they still serve, sell that much bourbon. I'm not sure that all 80% of the counties are still dry. No. So, anyway. Yeah, yeah I think in the 80s just, they uh, saw some repeal of some blue law. I grew up in Virginia. Blue for the laws, most part. yeah. And, like, stores just were not open on Sunday. Yeah. Which is strange to me as a oh, working we mother. Have, where I'm like, I got to go to the grocery store. Why are we you We still open? have versions of the blue laws, you yeah. know, even here in yeah. Georgia, where you can't sell liquor or alcohol after. Well, you can, but it has to be after 1230. On Sundays. Yes. Right. Because you have to go to church first. Just saying. And then you could go drink. <laughs> But I'm excited for the Quilt Museum, and if you guys haven't been to the Quilt Museum in Kentucky, please go, because it is a beautiful, yeah. stunning art museum. Yeah, and check out our interview with the um, the CEO of the museum, Frank Bennett. That's over on our Celebrities Kitchen playlist. We'll link to that. Right. Frank's a nice guy, and it was great interviewing him, but I have to admit, every time I say his name, I think of um, fried green tomatoes. Oh, and barbecue. And barbecue. <laughs> Just say it. It's a quality movie <laughs> reference right there. There you go. All right, so neutrals. Neutrals, what are they? Things without colors. <laughs> Things without the colors. And next topic. <laughs> <laughs> so there's three. There's only three neutrals? White, black, and brown. And then all the others are like the mix of those. Oh. <laughs> like That's gray. Point. Or gray and tan. Or gray creams. and brown makes taupe. Team. Tans, white. There's a word pile up in her mouth right there. What's coming out? <laughs> it's been a long day. It's <laughs> still only 11.30. I know. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. And? I don't think that those are the only neutrals, though. Like, I totally disagree. From a with, classic From a definition. classic definition. In terms of? Placement right. of color in quilts. Traditionally, I would say yes. White and creams are your traditional neutral. And if and if you like a lot of Amish quilts, then black is used as a neutral. Yes, I would say that those are things. So, do you you use a ton of neutrals? You know, I've gotten away from it. It used to be that. All of my quilts just had white backgrounds because that was an easy choice. Right. White and snow. Snow. Cone of snow. Cone of snow. Big. It's yeah. Huge. Uh, slightly whitish. <laughs> Not a cream. I was much more into creams earlier on because the fabric choices I was making were more traditional colors and not the bright poppy ones that I tend to go for right. now. So I think for me, neutral is whatever I say it is. Like, if I'm making a quilt and the background's red, red's my neutral. But that's, you're confusing the background or a field fabric for a, def, a color definition. True. I agree with that. So we're talking, but if we look at, and this is semantics, neutral, yes, tr is identified as the white, black, and brown and variations of those colors or saturations of those colors, mm -hmm. different saturations of those colors. Yes, those are considered neutrals. But if you're looking at a quilt that has none of those, what color then represents that is that is talking to and relating to all the other colors in it, that tends to be the neutral in that quilt. Yeah, but I think there needs to be a better word than neutral in that sense. So you're using what, field color? Yeah, it could be. So, all right, so quilt behind us. Yes. The gray is the neutral, but there's a whole lot of pinkish red as a background. Yeah, that's true. So, color definition, gray neutral, pinkish red field fabric. So, and I, and I don't know this, so I don't, I'm not an expert in this, but, so. That's never stopped us from <laughs> giving opinions on things before, Lynn. I know. Exactly. <laughs> But I, but I recognize gray as a color. Like, it's not just a neutral. It is a color in this quilt that is less representational 
than the pink. But if I had been able to find that gray it would in have the been place it. of the pink, which is what I originally wanted, <laughs> but they didn't have any at the store I was at, <laughs> then it would look very different. And then it would be, well, be like a completely neutral. different quilt. Yeah. So, but that doesn't mean that it's, a, but I think the pink is treated as the neutral because it talks and relates to all the other fabrics in the, the pink is what binds all the other fabrics together because all the other fabrics are talking to it. And yet it doesn't appear in any of the actual blocks. It, I think that's Just okay. Saying. I don't think that's required. I, this is a nice quilt. Oh, I don't deny that. I do a lot of work, too. Because <laughs> it's custom quilted. We're talking about that next. <laughs> but I think I've made quilts that I would technically say that I've stayed away from any neutral. Yeah. And I kind of do it on purpose. Like, how can I not use white, gray, or And I have black. done that, too. You and I talked last year about this right. is the year we're busting out. We're not using whites and creams. I think I did it. And I do love a color-rich quilt. But I think then it's you're relying on value differences. Oh, yeah. On the definitely. place for the eye to rest. Just traditionally that, that neutral right. slash background, because it's the same fabric playing both roles, I agree. is where your eye goes to rest in light of all the busy prints that may be in there or block construction. I think that's a good point. So the neutral... <laughs> the neutral... <laughs> it is a good point. Yay me. <laughs> the neutral... <laughs> It's playing two different roles. It's playing yes. a background color as well as it's a traditionally defined yes. as a neutral color. Yeah. I get that. Okay. Okay. All right. I like, but I like background colors that aren't expected. I do too. I'm, I'm learning I to like love them I like graphic prints. I love. <sighs> graphic uh, prints give me a little bit of trouble sometimes heart, still. Little heart Well, only because I get tied up in the, oh, I've just lopped off part of this and now there's two parts of it butting up against each other. It, and the print doesn't line up, it doesn't mesh, and, it's, and that jarring. throws me off. Yeah, it's jarring, and that throws me off. I get that. I think if it's enough of it, though, you get away with it. It's like, it's like you know, when you're putting in, in a scrap quilt, when you're putting in reds, mm -hmm. and you, if you put in 10 reds, and they're all slightly different, you get away with it than if you're putting in two reds. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. So I guess if you have enough of that, that you make the viewer believe that you meant to do it, is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, just add more. Just add more. Kind yeah. of like with quilting, where you're like, ooh, my straight line turned out kind of wobbly, but the one next to it, also wobbly. <laughs> just keep, no, it's a design choice. Double down. Just double down and do it. Yes. Quadruple down. <laughs> Quintuple down. So I, I, I know there's been books written on... These are neutral quilts. I mean, they're very popular. They're very, I think neutral quilts are very soothing in that it's low all contrast, all, yeah. low contrast. It's, you know, it's very, you, you can depend on texture more than of the prints, even um, when you're looking at a neutral mm -hmm. quilt. I did one that's all neutral, and I, it's a very calming quilt. I don't use it very often. <laughs> Very comfortable. I was just trying out a new ruler. I was like, oh, I got all this stuff. Let's put it all in one. Now, do you ever play with them to get slightly cooler neutrals or slightly warmer neutrals? Or do you just, like, if you're going for creams, you just like all the creams no matter what they are? Um, You know what? I've made another neutral quilt I completely forgot about. I did a log cabin where it was, you, it was all neutrals and one side of it was, and whose pattern was it? She called it white chocolate. Was it Pat Weiss? Yes, Pat Weiss. And she actually wrote a book about, we should include that in the notes, um, Pat Weiss's neutral book. Um, but one side of it was like white creams, and the other side of it was kind of a golden tanny creams mm -hmm. type of thing. And it was enough to give you contrast in the two sides. Yeah. For the, because to do a successful log cabin, you have to have one side contrasting with the other side or it doesn't it's not a lot of them and it yeah. doesn't stand out as well or you don't get as neat interesting patterns if you don't yeah like i find i'm drawn more you guys made fun of me you said i put brown in every she quilt. did she put brown, brown in, in here she put brown for a while you were putting well, brown I had a lot of brown fabric i was trying to use up 
That's why. And it went with all the other rando colors I was using. And you know, I said that to her, and like the past three or four things that I've made fat brown in them. So, like, she apparently just rubbed off on me, and I said, oh, I'll use all the brown now. Yes. She was hogging it all, so now I can use some. Well, I find I'm really digging, like, a cool brown instead of a warm brown, so it's more like grayish topish brown. I think for me, um, because of what side of the color wheel I'm more attracted to, I'm probably more attracted to the warmer sides mm-hmm. of the grays and the browns and the black and white are not warm. No. No. But the warmer side is probably where you're gonna find me. Because they look better with the golds and the reds and the oranges and the mm-hmm. which I tend tend to make. But if you're looking for contrast, I don't, I don't, what looks good, you know? Yeah. I made this Lone Star quilt, and it had a lot of purple in it. And I used this gray polka dot that if you pulled it out, you really have to look at your grays because they can change color on you. When I pulled the bolt out and I put it up next to the purple, the gray turned purple. Mm-hmm. It almost turned a lavender color. It was yeah. really weird. But if you put it up to something else, you wouldn't have seen that. But you saw it pull out that undertone in it. So, I don't know. Yeah, I like neutral colors. I use them. I probably use them. I think I say this every segment. I probably do that more than I think I do. Because, you know, I just think I like brights the most. Yep. So. All right. Well. We're going to take a break so you guys can see a little bit closer look here at Great Grunge, and then we'll be right back. All right, we're back, and we are going to talk about some custom quilting. Uh, One of my favorite things. Yay! (laughs) <laughs> super excited guys Pam's like meander and done I wish I should have on this one <laughs> meander and done what's a good stipple <laughs> all the stipples so, my brain likes jigsaw puzzles I can't help it I like jigsaw puzzles but there is not a stipple on this thing oh wait there is never mind oh, oh on the outer border where you can't see it that so, doesn't count did this one with the intention of it being a birthday present. And then and I got you, you got mad at the person who didn't give it to him. Oh no, no. I remembered that I had another one. So it was for a 13-year-old girl. And I thought, well, this might be a little subdued. So I had another one, an old one block wonder that I had finished that was like super bright hot pink a lot in there. And I pulled both out and let my daughter choose like which one do you think your friend would like? And she picked the other ones. I'm like, great. So I did like all the custom quilting on this one instead of just an overall thinking it was going to be a gift. And now I'm like, I'll still hold on to it and give it to someone eventually. But it was like a lot of sweaty quilting to get it done (laughs) by this party deadline. And then we didn't even. (laughs) Didn't even use it. But now you've got one stored. You're ready. I do. Yeah. I I got one loaded and ready to go. Okay. Yes. So custom quilting. So what is custom quilting, Lynn? I think anything that is not edge-to-edge quilting, you could consider a spectrum of custom quilting. So you are quilting to a block, to a piece. You are not... To a border. Maybe, yeah. It may be the same to, design repeated in every type of fabric, but it's not just a... It's to the... You know, it's all, unique to yeah. the whatever piece. Yep. And there's a spectrum, I think. You have, you know... A computerized custom quilting where they'll and I'm not I don't have a computer but they'll block out the block and then they'll do mm-hmm. certain things in that block um, you have uh, custom quilting to the overall design like if it's a round applique mm-hmm. echo quilting Ooh, yeah. around applique um, if there's a lot of piecing like, if you have a block that has a lot of different piecing, a star blocks or feathered stars or um, any of the paper piecing type of stuff where you see the Judy Niemeyer stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Where it's real intricate paper piecing that is custom. There's different types of custom quilting to that. Um, 
And I think those types of quilts lend themselves to custom quilts, oh, especially yeah. applique. It broke my heart. I was on a Facebook thing, and someone, or was it a Facebook? I don't remember how I know this story, but someone had a applique Noah's Ark quilt that their mother had made and she passed away and the daughter brought it in maybe it was a store the daughter brought it in and said I want this quilted and she would only pay for overall edge to edge of all these little animals that have been appliqued and I just my heart sank thinking this woman's painstaking and I think it was Hand turn, needle turn, applique. Oh, yeah. So I really, I have a problem when I see a applique quilt be custom or not custom quilted. I'm like, that is, and I know that there are a lot of. <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't wrong. do a lot of applique. <laughs> that's wrong. That's not right. That not, especially needle turn. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Not that machine isn't a lot of work. Machine applique is a lot of work too, but yeah. Just different. So I think there are certain ones that lend themselves to custom quilting. Yeah, I think particularly when you've got less busy fabrics. Like I went with a packed floral design in the solids, and I was going to continue it out in the border, and I thought, you're not going to see that. But right. how busy that border is. So yeah. I just sort of like, I did the packed floral out to a, maybe about an inch or so into the border, and then was like, ah, meander. <laughs> <laughs> and, and done. done. <laughs> Like, can't see that. Cool. Well, that was, I mean, that was going to be one of my points. I mean, the fabric's going to dictate what kind of quilting you want to do, too. If you've got really busy, you know, fabric and and that's more important than the quilting, then, yeah, you're not going to need a custom quilting. Yeah. I mean, there's some. And then use. How are you using this quilt? Or if if you're giving it to a three-year-old, you're not doing heirloom quilting on it. Mm -hmm. Hey, what is heirloom quilting, like, by definition? What does that mean? Oh, I, I, you're going to... I've you seen a definition... I know. <laughs> I've seen a definition for it, and it is free... Well, I want to say free motion. It could be computerized. Custom quilting to the piece. Um, show quality. 100 hours. I mean, some really serious type of stuff. So just super fancy. Absolutely super Kay. fancy. Yeah, have the highest done, quality. Have you ever done heirloom quilting? Not for anybody else. I mean, I think my thread painting could be considered that just because of the amount of work that's in it and it's all custom and it's all hand drawn and it's all all those kind of things tick that box off. Yep. Um, but I don't know. When I when I say heirloom, for some reason I always think of oh, I'm gonna forget her. I'm always bad with names. But the lady who does the really intricate um like ch children's clothes with the pen tucking and uh she makes the christening gowns and she's got a big i'm not that target market <laughs> so i'm not sure who you're talking Crud. about i will look it up someone yell it out in the universe yes and, we'll and you're gonna know exactly who i'm talking about a very nice person will leave it in the comments and I'm you, sure. you would go to her seminars and learn how to do all these variety of having to make <laughs> old not old skill but lace like christening gowns and pin tucking and you know what i'm talking about no i am familiar with those knows. concepts but i do not know of a person that just focuses on that I can see Again, your face not the target market anyway yeah so i think that you know it depends on what you're doing with it style what style of quilt it is whether it's got a lot of piecing or not you know, are you going to show off the blocks by the, is the quilting going to show off the blocks? Yeah. So for the one behind us, when I did kind of an all over design in the background of it, the pinkish parts, and then for the blocks, I'm like, okay, in all of the gray pieces, I will do kind of an up and down. And then I will do an orange peel in all of the other, other like the print yeah. parts. And it worked out okay. Because it gave me enough variety. Because I, honestly, this quilt is all half square triangles in the blocks. They're just arranged in different ways with different fabric placements. And that helped. So it was custom, but it wasn't the, oh, crap, what do I go put? I'm in a new part. What do I put here? <laughs> so that helped of like, oh, I knew, I knew my plan. 
And so it wasn't overwhelmingly custom. Now, I know, I know there are some people who take the block, and, and I think this is a good idea. You print out the block, and you put tracing paper or some kind of clear plastic over it, and you draw over the block to say, this is how I'm going to quilt it. That helps identify the print. And I know a friend of ours actually graphs it all out and graphs her quilting out on graph paper, paper on how she's going to quilt blocks. Yeah, um, I don't do that because uh, that's a lot of work. The graph paper, I for cutting fabric, yes, but for quilting, no, not. Yeah, not she me. draws the graph. I do the, the piece of glass that I put masking tape. Like we had a picture frame and whatever, it got busted, yeah. but the glass was okay, which is the opposite of what usually happens. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> of course, you could go to the down. dollar store and buy one yeah. cheap. So and then use dry erase dollar. marker. <laughs> yeah, I've done that, and that serves well. Except I find dry erase markers have a fatter <coughs> point than I would get with thread. So it's, sometimes it's not always exactly. I can it gives see you it well idea. enough in my head. It gives you an idea. Yeah. Exactly. Um, the other thing when people are considering custom quilting uh, is budget. That's if you're quilting by check or if you're doing it yourself or both. Well, I think if you're quilting by check, you definitely oh, want to yeah. talk to the person about budget. Because you can get an all over for a penny a square inch and not anymore. Got a sale for two cents, <coughs> two and a half cents. Yeah, I think it's closer to two and a half. At least in our area, it's closer to two yeah, and a half it, cents. Yeah, it varies widely by area. And that's US. Not. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's US. But budget, I mean, because there are some, like some will do custom quilting by the square inch. Mm -hmm. I don't, I charge by the hour. When and I that's do, an estimate. When not I'm on talked an into doing it for people. Yeah. And then I estimate how many hours it takes me. So that, you know, I know if it's going to take me three hours, I'm, and all custom quilting is going to take three hours plus. And that's for not a king size custom quilt. That is for a, right, yeah. a wall size, smallish. Yes, exactly. Um, and I think that there's just different levels there's medium density, moderate density. So I mean, because I would say would be, this is moderate. Yeah. It's so not. the equivalent of about a quarter inch apart. I think if you're doing. A quarter to half inch apart in the stitching line. Yeah, that's more. Yeah, half inch or something. But I think if you're doing, and I'm looking at a quilt over here that you can't see on camera, so that does you no good. But even you're doing more uh, eighth of an inch type of quilting, yeah. which you see in a lot of art quilts. Yeah. Yep. So. But budget, definitely, and then density of it. And then what kind of batting do you put in to give you different? Well, depend like if it's super dense, a fluffy batting is not going to make a bit of difference. Other than maybe right. help it drape better, but if it's a wall quilt, do you even need that drape? I, yeah, I, well, I double bat any of my wall quilts because I like dimension. The dimension. And, and you the what you don't quilt, <laughs> what you don't quilt is going to pop and what you heavy quilt's going to go down and it's going to give you dimension to that quilt so yeah that I think. and this one is you know an 80 20 blend and it's been washed so it's got a little bit of crinkle to it or actually i didn't wash it i just stuck it in the dryer mostly to remove pet hair before we gifted it but it was going to a house that also had cats and dogs so but i guess <laughs> i i think custom quilting's you know up to style budget fabric i mean mm -hmm. there's a lot of good reasons to do it but then not so yeah, but it takes it, and that's more like I like I, it. I like that. I like that part. Oh, of so it. I did pay for custom quilting on a king size quilt, but it was a very loose density, and essentially it was just big half square triangles, kind of put in this radiating, you know, diamond shape. And I paid for custom quilting because I'm like, I want giant holly leaves on this, and it's on this weird diagonal, and I knew it was something that I could not come over here to your house and do myself because it's it's not that good. And it was king size, so I was not going to attempt to do it at home. <laughs> and so I did pay for it. And it was worth it. And then I forgot to put it on my bed this Christmas. <laughs> Oops. But we got cold after Christmas, and I put a different, our, my lucky star king size version on the bed. My husband's like, I'm cold. I'm like, oh. <laughs> We have quilts for that. Yeah, so now we, I think we have the equivalent of four quilts on our bed. I have three. Or maybe four layers. We've got the sheet. We've got kind of the everyday quilt. And then I have a furry blanket I got when I was 10. 
and then my husband has a different quilt that I made on his side, and then we have the Christmas one on top of that, even though it's January. Hey, Merry Christmas. I put up the Christmas quilt, and my husband was quite disappointed because it's got Minky on the back. He's like, oh. Yeah, we I said, were... nope, can't use that one now. It's January. I can't like, have... But it's cold. I don't care. Here's another one. I can't put a Minky backed quilt on the bed because I already have a problem of cats gravitating towards me, and I do not need more <laughs> of a more cat magnet. Cat magnet. But I will say that when you do custom quilting, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, look at the density. Because if you're going to use it on a bed, it doesn't need to be yeah. that dense. It and I make that, I make that mistake on a regular basis. I'm like, but it looks so pretty. And I keep quilting. And she lays it. under a piece of cardboard. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. <laughs> Not good. So any other questions or, um, no? you know... No. It's so, it's so, custom quilting is gorgeous. I love it. It's my favorite part of and the, it, it actually, it's part of my favorite part of the quilting process. I will say it does not have to be intimidating. No. Because even gosh, something no. like this, where it's like, I have Just two fields. designs I'm choosing from, and it's being conscious about where you place that in the quilt is what makes it custom. Right. And not, oh, I did the left half with a meander and the right half with flowers. Like, that's not custom. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to, you know, um, have every every little piece and every block be different. It can True. be an all-over design on just that one block. Like, you could do a feather around the whole block, and then mm -hmm. that's the design yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So, if you like feathers, not everybody does. Or some people like them, but are scared of them. Exactly. And then how not to be scared of them is do them and just over and over them. again. Yeah, that's um, it. Yeah. And I, you know, quilting's, the thing about quilting is practice. Especially, yeah, especially custom quilting. That's the thing about it. I'm better at it than I was five years ago. Yeah. Hey, do you change your thread type, whether you're doing an all over or a custom, or do you just kind of use the same thread for whatever? I, my machine tends to like a certain thread, and I tend to use that thread, and I have tried to change different threads, and it's been grumpier, and I've been like, no we want to get it, we want to get along, so I go back to my favorite threads. I've been trying a new thread brand right now, and I, there are parts of me that like it and parts of me that don't, so yeah. if it keeps breaking... Not don't get along. <laughs> exactly. Do you change your needle more often when you do custom quilting, Lynn? I, no. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I need to change my needle right now because I've been doing cable runners that have had Insel Bright in them. Oh, yeah. And That'll so I need to change. Needle. Yeah. I'm going to do one more with Insel Bright in it, and then I'll change my needle. Because, you know, you're going through. And I've got to do that on my other machine, too, because I've been couldn't bind me on the Ansel Bright. Because hmm. I think you should have table runners with Ansel Bright in them. And that's just so it doesn't jack up your tabletop. Yes, exactly. Because I have some antique tables that I don't want. So, see. computer custom quilting. And you don't have a computer. I don't. Either. It's gorgeous. And, oh, I've seen some things. And oh. I was like, oh, it looks good. You know, and honestly, custom quilting is as much about the creativity and the 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 quilter as much as it is the capability of the machine. And that is a skill to get oh, that right. Yeah. To get everything designed and then sized right and lined up. And hit the points where Ooh. it's supposed to hit. And it is some skill. And it looks like, oh, people just think, oh, the computer does everything. I'm like, there's a lot of work for the computer to do what it's doing. Yes. That I don't know that everybody understands or respects. Yeah. And I think that there's a horrible misconception of people who think are new to quilting and think I can just go buy one of these long arms with this big fancy computer on it and make all kinds of money. And I'm like, yeah, but if you don't have the creativity and the patience and the design, you know, there's there's more to it than just yeah. A computer. I think sometimes there's a tendency to overkill. Yeah, <laughs> when you are like new to a hobby, like I will buy all the things for this hobby. <laughs> I do. I buy all the things, and you have to get experience with it to know what part you're going to prefer. Do you prefer a long arm or a sit down, right. or do you want to do big quilts or little quilts? Do you want to do art quilts or quilt for right. quilts? You know, so it's. And I think that's true. When you're looking for a custom quilter, you need to look at what she or he does. Mm -hmm. 
because what their quilting looks like is going to be what your quilt's going to look like. It's going to reflect that. So if you don't like what they're doing or the, the density or the whatever, you need to shop for them like you do anything else. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard for me. That's why I got into quilting. I had a hard time turning over my top to somebody else. I wanted creative control. So I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, you know, ended up doing my own stuff. But, you know, if I were just doing charity quilts or just doing gifts and I wanted it all over end in, there's some great quilters out there that do that. <clears throat> not me. <laughs> <laughs> I am not doing edge to edge. Rarely will you see an edge to edge out of my. Only oh, yeah. on the 16 baby quilts you're supposed to be making. Oh, right? Lord, help me. <laughs> Those aren't done yet. How many how many weeks have we been talking about that? Oh, I got three more to do. One's done. One's done, bound. One, three more. Mm -hmm. And a baby's been born. I saw the Facebook thing. I got a plan. Though. I got a baby quilt to do, too. I, oh, so great. I know. Fudge <laughs> nuggets. I got a week. All right. <laughs> Okay, so are your quilts so custom that they're one of a kind? Let us know. Leave a comment on our blog or in the YouTube episode. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by QT Fabrics. Learn more about them and their fun fabrics at qtfabrics.com. And don't forget to enter the giveaway for the QT bundle. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches, Big Think Productions, for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. The next virtual stitching is Friday, February 9th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Broadcast on our YouTube channel, and my podcast, Hip to Be a Square, is out Fridays or Saturdays on iTunes or Google Play. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends.